Madam Clerk. <coughs> Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you. We will call this meeting to order and we will stand for a pledge led by Trustee Cindy Reese. Yeah, exactly. Oops, sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Someday. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Um, Madam Vice President, do we have action taken in closed session? We do. Thank you, President. Um, at tonight's closed session, the board voted to ratify the appointment of the following public employee contracts, which is subject to contractual agreement by the Chancellor. The board, number one, the board voted for the release of the following administrator, employee ID 108-28807, seven eyes, zero no, zero abstain. Two, the board voted for the release of the following administrator, employee ID 109-77814, seven eyes, zero no, zero abstain, zero absent. Trustee Weinstein, I'm so sorry. If I could just interrupt to provide clarification. Those were two report outs from actions taken <coughs> at the previous closed session that needed to be reported out tonight. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, can I continue? Okay. Um, recommendation number three, recommendation to appoint Lay Seta as the interim vice chancellor of general services, district office effective March 27th, 2019 for a two year term or until a permanent candidate is hired at $212,130 annually. Six ayes, zero noes, one abstention by trustee Handy, zero absent. That's it. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, we'll move to item 2.5, approval of- Madam President, uh, Lee Sada is in Here. the room. Okay. Oh, thank you, where is he? He's coming forward. There he is. This is Lee Sada, soon to be Dr. Lee Sada, and um, Thank you. he's been around the block a few times, Santa Rosa Junior College, uh, College of Marin, San Mateo Community College District, Solano College. Uh, just say a quick hi. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, board President Bonilla, um, members of the board, Chancellor White, uh, members of the community. I guess I just wanted to be here this evening to say thank you for the opportunity. I really do appreciate it. I do look forward to getting to know all of you. I think this role is um, one of great importance to the students and faculty. I look forward to getting to know and working closely with the cabinets at each of the campuses and getting to know all of you as well. So thank you and I really appreciate the thank opportunity. You. Thank you and we welcome Congratulations, you. thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move to approval of the agenda. Of the agenda, can I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved and second. Second, second and discussion. Uh, Madam President, I would like to remove from consent items 3.3 and 7.2. 3.3 is the first reading of the proposed board policy regarding the. Um, uh, uh, reserve, uh, financial reserve, and 7.2 is the contract with the uh, Collaborative Brain Trust on the uh, Chancellor search. Um, and so, clarification, are you moving 3.3? I'd like to move those to debate, please. You, into action? Uh, into action, yes. So we're moving them into action. 3.3 yes, and 7.2. 7 Madam President. Let, let, let's let the board clerk um, catch up with 3.3 okay. and 7.2. Thank you. Moved into action. Um, so pulled from the agenda. 6.3. Madam Clerk, 6.3. Thank you. Any other items? 
And for the public, 6.3 is the uh, contract ratification uh, for the OHO technology amendment. That's correct. Thank you. Um, seeing none, we can take a, we, it's been properly motioned, so can we have a roll call, please? On. I believe 6.3 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. has been pulled, has been removed, I'm sorry, has been removed from the agenda. Doesn't that normally take a roll call vote on that particular item to remove something from an agenda? Well, I'll accept that as a an, um, friendly amendment to the motion to the approve the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't remember whether I mo made the motion or seconded, it, though. I think I seconded. Just to provide clarification on this item, the board president and the chancellor have the ability to remove items. Since we already are considering the adoption of the agenda in full, the kind of best practice at this moment would just to be to consider the motion for the agenda with the revisions that the board seeks and to then vote on that in full. So that would, in essence, Trustee Withrow, address your concern around the votes to remove the item. Okay. We're not voting to remove it. We're voting 6.3. You vote against the whole thing? In this case, yes. Okay. Right. Um, so we're back to roll call. Thank you. Student Trustee Galan? Yes. Student Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Withrow? No. Trustee Handy? Trustee Gonzalez UN? Yes. Trustee Napoli Abella Reese? Trustee Brown? No. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving to 2.7, Associated uh, Student Government. Good evening, Board of Trustees. For the last seven months, I've been coming up to the stage and calling out a lot of the problems that I see and experience on the Laney campus and the district as a whole. And oftentimes, I'm asked why I'm so negative. My answer is this. As a student leader, it is my responsibility to shed light on the student experience. This includes campus facilities that are falling apart, a district that creates new platforms like Juan Peralta, but doesn't consider ASLC funding procedures, and all other facets of student life. We do this without being malicious towards any individual, but discontent with the system and culture as a whole. We ask not just for individual accountability, but systemic change that can be seen on every campus and through every student interaction, whether that is an interaction with a teacher, staff, faculty, or admin. ALSLC will continue to speak out and speak aloud. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chancellor, Chancellor's Office, as well as trustees, board members, and community. Elections are underway, and we have our elections committee during their, doing their part by helping in any way they can to ensure that the candidates have their full support and make sure to let the candidates know that the guidelines, the guidelines during the campaign, campaigning period. We have a couple of members of the AS that are going to the GA in Sacramento April 5th through the 7th. We are also wrapping up Women's History Month with a packing party to pack all the feminine hygiene products we've collected on Wednesday, March 27th, and have them delivered to the Youth Engagement Advocacy Housing, also known as YA, in Berkeley. However, if you still want to donate more hygienic products, they are welcomed at BCC. I also want to take the time to thank every single woman in this room and outside of this room for everything that you all do day in and day out for women across the board. Lastly, the MSA held a vigil for the victims in New Zealand in the New Zealand shooting on Wednesday during college hour in the atrium. They encouraged everyone to wear all black. Can we all please take a moment of silence for the victims and the families and everyone affected during, the, during this tragedy? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
I'm sorry, y'all. I had to take a breath for a second. So, um, very first thing to talk about, ASMC has been researching education codes, um, particularly to Title V and researching our nine plus one rights because we've noticed that we haven't been putting a lot of effort into knowing them. And next year, hopefully we can implement every month giving a session to all of our students, letting them know their own rights and how you can use them appropriately. Or if they would like to, they can go up the ranks with us and we can you know, fight together like we're supposed to. Um, another thing, I talked to you guys like a month ago about the blue lights and I wanted to see if anything had happened within the month. So last week I pressed one of them and there's like a 15 minute promise time that the police will come. I waited 25 minutes and there was no police that came. Um, this was only one place that I tried it at. So it's concerning to me that it didn't, my, the promise time didn't happen. There was still no indication given that the police had came, because if they did, the president kind of would have found out that they would have came for no reason. Um, but she didn't even find out for any reason. So yeah, that needs to be fixed. And again, I want to reiterate that inside of our parking lot B, there is only two that are not on, one in the back and one in the front. The, the one in the front is still boxed up. Um, and the box is kind of being taken was taken off because of the rain and now it's continuing to being taken off because we have more rain. Um, and that's very concerning. We've had situations on campus before of people being attacked and for it to happen at night would be the worst. And to use myself as an example, you guys do know that I had knee surgery about two months ago. And considering the fact that if I took a night class and I got through it and there was a situation that happened, I can't even press the button to trust that there's going to be a 15 minute um, promise time that the police will come. Mind you, I still can't even run. So um, I don't think we're thinking about those ADA issues that are happening on campus when that happens. Um, so hopefully that can be looked at. And then today, my club council president who's sitting amongst the board in his great ASMC jacket. Um, he had an event today about women in abuse. And Trustee Handy, President Burns, and myself were all part of the panel of abuse. And I do want to extend um, a welcoming hand to both of them and saying thank you for doing it and sharing their stories and really putting themselves out there, not only for my constituents, but for the constituents in which they represent. Um, they really opened themselves up and Dr. Burns congratulated us in stepping up and really starting to dig deep with our students and to start healing with them. Um, so hopefully within next month, we can start our sister circle and our uh, men's circle. Uh, most likely I'll be in charge of the women's circle. I don't know about the men's circle just yet because I'm trying to find the right person to do that or Montel might do it, but he's going to be leaving so somebody else might have to do that. Um, but hopefully we can get that done and we wanna, we're want we looking at trying to do it every week, every two weeks, giving them that hope and that joy of healing that they have somebody to talk to and they have an outlet to let things out and they have a place where they can cry and scream and let things go. Um, and then lastly, we're still collecting homeless kids. We're still giving them out. Um, one of the people that we just partnered with, which is Kim Murphy, who's sitting amongst the crowd, she uh, actually has been giving out homeless kids a lot too. So we have recently just found that out. So now we're partnered together to give out more homeless kids to our students and to start helping them and letting them know the procedures of them being able to use our showers in order if they need to use the showers. And then we're making a boutique soon in a food pantry soon i'm working with president burns to find space and lastly me and montel are representing merritt college the peralta district and all the 13 schools in our region um at a committee hearing in sacramento at a committee hearing in sacramento about ab302 the overnight parking um we do ask that if you guys do agree to overnight parking let us know like what kind of we can talk about. We already know some things that we know we can talk about on behalf of our constituents, but it helps if we talk about more um, broadly on everyone. And it's helpful if you can include like some stipulations that we feel like should happen because there is talks that another 
Senate bill or assembly bill needs to be made to put a stipulation on it of safety because there's the safety of like we don't know if another homeless student's going to talk to another homeless student and then there's like all these different entities that could happen in it. Um, so me and Montel will be doing that on April 2nd and April 3rd. And then we both will be at GA, all of the schools will be at GA, voting on resolutions and getting it passed into legislation. And again, AB 1504 is something that we're pushing for um, to making sure that we can make better GAs for all of the students and give them more informative information about laws and systemic stuff that's going on with the chancellor's office from the from the board of governors to the chancellor's office down to the schools and colleges down to our ASs and we hope that you guys can all encourage that in all of our ASs thank you thank you for that um, we are moved to 2.8 Peralta classified senate report Good evening, President Bonilla, members of the Board of Trustees, Chancellor White, Presidents, Vice Presidents, and guests. There's two reports to that tonight, um, one from Merritt College um, campus report. Over 25 classified professional staff were able to participate in the March 21st um, Flex Day activities. During the Flex Day morning welcome, Merritt College Classified Senate President encouraged faculty classified professional staff and administrators to participate in a classified shout out activity. Attendees acknowledged and gave positive feedback regarding how much they appreciated the work of classified professionals. Comments were placed on a post-it note and read out loud during the classified professional workshop later at 2.30 in the afternoon. The classified professional staff were overwhelmed by the feedback received from their colleagues. In addition, Merritt College Classified Senate conducted a flex day um, classified Professionals Workshop from 2.30 to 4.30. The workshop was robust and engaging. Workshop activities included team building exercises such as Shark Tank and Got Your Back, classified staff prioritization process, classified professional development requests, and also classified it in objectives, objectives for 2019 and 20 through 2020. The Merritt College Classified Senate served coffee, cake, and ice cream during the activities. The second campus report is from Laney. On Thursday, March 21st, the Laney College Classified Senate, with the support of the President's Office and Vice Presidents Ferguson and Pinto, sponsored the fourth installment of Growing Our Own Classified Professional Development at the Laney Fieldhouse. Classifieds were encouraged to wear their Growing Our Own t-shirts, and two workshops were held. The first was a safety workshop by Ken McCollum, a retired law enforcement officer who has lectured and taught self-defense classes for the past 25 years throughout the Bay Area. Mr. McCollum taught classifieds to make themselves tough targets, both on and off the job, by becoming more aware and what to do when confronted. The second workshop was part of part two of managing stress. Dr. Don Moultrie, an educator for 24 years and a trainer for 12 years in teaching stress management and ensuring self-care, discussed with classifieds about de-escalation, handed out a resiliency and self-care checklist, conducted office exercises, and finished with a team-building version of bingo. More team-building activities, including musical chairs, followed the workshops, after which lunch was served and classifieds returned to their work areas. The work of classified staff is critical in supporting students in meeting their educational goals. Having these professional development activities is important to the morale of classified employees. Improvement of the skill sets of classified staff is of immediate benefit to both Peralta and its students. The Peralta Classified Senate asked the chancellor and this board to support opportunities for professional development of classified employees. That is the end of the campus reports. Thank you very much for your attention and support of the Peralta Classified Senate. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to 2.9 District Academic Senate Report. Good evening. Uh, uh, today we had our uh, uh, District Academic Senate special meeting to look at the uh, first draft of the uh, five-year plan, uh, which uh, we uh, had a few comments on. And uh, as we move along, we're uh, going to 
be interested in looking at uh, uh, and attending uh, the various meetings uh, uh, in April on the uh, BAM uh, allocation model and some other areas. Um, the week after spring break is when uh, the state uh, academic senate is going to be hosting their 50th uh, anniversary celebration, uh, which is going to be over uh, in Burlingame over at the Westin. And we're really excited. We'll be uh, having about six, uh, six or seven of our people uh, over there. Uh, the resolutions, uh, uh, which we're fairly famous for, that we uh, we involve ourselves in, and and usually uh, there's white papers that accompany some of the different efforts that have been going on. Most notably, uh, AB uh, 705 is uh, definitely on people's uh, radar still. There's issues around it uh, in terms of um, co uh, course offerings in uh, uh, English 1 or Stats 13 online uh, without any accompanying uh, 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 support classes. And that's something that's uh, trying to be addressed here. But what's interesting is that when we went to our uh, regional meetings, a lot of the other colleges haven't even begun to address it at all. And so that was refreshing to see that that uh, uh, Peralta was trying to address it and trying to address issues around equity. So I, I, I'd like to really con uh, commend the efforts that uh, have been going on. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to uh, working with the uh, chancellor. The chancellor came by our meeting today, which we appreciated. She got probably peppered with too many questions, uh, and so that probably wasn't good. Uh, what I'd like to encourage you about, because I know you have it on your agenda uh, in terms of an action item, uh, I would encourage you to have a uh, very broad uh, search for a chancellor, but even the pre pre uh, search for the chancellor in that having workshops and whatnot with faculty classified and and administrators and students to all give their perspective on what qualities they want to see in a chancellor. I think that's going to be important. And my concern is that if you try to start this relatively too soon, uh, we're running out of time, and we certainly can't do anything during the summertime. So that means ideally something starting in the fall, and you know, ending, you know, probably like in April or something. Uh, but I would hope that you guys plan something that will uh, incorporate and uh, really, really get engage uh, engagement from uh, from everybody. Um, yeah, so anyhow, I encourage you to uh, look at uh, what, uh, what kind of ways you guys could uh, do it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Madam Chair, we're moving into, um, our Vice President, we're moving into communications. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Jeff Sinceri, who, um, if you'd like to come up, um, two by Jeff Sinceri and also one, um, Catherine Steyer. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Uh, board members, um, this is actually about the issue of the reserves. I know that there's been a lot of talk about it. I just want to remind the board and the, um, the administration that the PFT has an MOU with the district that says all board policies must be provided to the PFT 30 days prior to being voted on at the PF PBC. Um, now, I understand the desire of the administration to have such policy on reserves. The PFT agreed with the change in the policy as long as there was language that would make sure that the district couldn't preempt contractual obligations for wages and benefits to faculty and staff in order to pad their savings account. The PFT has a meeting with VC Whitaker tomorrow, so the fact that this is going to the board prior to the meeting, even for debate, is saying that the board is refusing to honor agreements between the district and the faculty union and its 10, 1,076 members. Now this bad faith motion will be read quite simply as a hostile attack against faculty, the faculty union, and by extension the students we serve, all in the spirit of what I see as a strange mix of pseudo-fiscal conservatism mixed with panic. 
My guess is that if the board chooses to flagrantly violate the agreements reached by the administration and our faculty union, we'll immediately look towards the grievance process and the judicial system for remediation and justice. We'd have to. And then you would have to spend more public money on lawsuits that could have been easily avoided by simply following the rules and agreements established by the district and our faculty, whom the PFT represents. Now, I know in a lot of ways, for expediency's sake, you want us to look the other way. But the PFT will never look the other way. Um, not when it comes to our contract or the district's obligation to be fair to our faculty, no matter who's in charge. And we'll take this as far as we need to. Thank you. Catherine. Hi. Hi. Good evening. My name is Catherine Steyer. I'm the co-director of KGPC LP Peralta Community Radio. Many of you may remember me from last spring. I want to reintroduce myself and reiterate my gratitude to you all for your support of KGPC. Thank you very much. So I want to share with you some great news about the station. We put up a donation button on the KGPC website and hey, we got some donations. We increased and sustained our monthly listenership by 25% each month since January 2018. That is a huge number, um, and I'm really proud. We, incre er, we brought on nine new shows this month, which is a super impressive number also. Nine. We continue our work with Beth Waddell's ESOL class. We provide space and engineering for their class projects, as well as feature the projects on our website. This will be our third year working with ESOL. We love this collaboration, and we encourage everyone to check out the class projects. They are super great. We now have a bona fide weekly news program currently, and we have a few great, that was a bad transition, sorry guys. We have a few great interviews in the works with Peralta faculty and district officials, so look forward to that and tune in every Friday at 7 p.m. This semester, KGPC DJed at Berkeley City College's Welcome Week. Um, Peralta is truly a magnificent mix of people with myriad background and life experience. It was really awesome to hang out with these students. They're super fun all age ranges and, like I said, walks of life. Um, so we chatted with them and played them music and invited them to come check us out. And so I would like to personally invite you all now, Board of Trustees, to come check us out and come across the parking lot, learn more about what we do for Peralta students, teachers, and staff, and see what a great resource we are for the East Bay community at large. And uh, just extend a welcome to our acting chancellor, Dr. White. Um, and you can also listen to KGPC LP on 96.9 FM from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., streaming 24-7 at kgpc969.org, where you can also listen to all of our archived episodes dating back to 2011. I got that in under two minutes, you guys. Again, thank you for your continued support and stewardship for our low-power FCC license. And have a great meeting tonight. I'm going to be engineering over in the studio, so I'll be listening to it all till 11 p.m. Just kidding. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're moving into 2.11, uh, Chancellor's report. Uh, Chancellor White. Thank you, President Bonilla, and good evening to everyone here this evening and to the members of the board and the college presidents and our governance leadership and our friends out in the audience. Um, a couple of reports that I'm going to just provide a very quick update um, for you. Um, the first involves the Fiscal Crisis Management Assistance Team, and better known as FICMAT, uh, have been on the ground here at Peralta now for several weeks, if not longer. I've had an opportunity to meet with them several times, and I am very impressed with their thoroughness and their due diligence around understanding and analyzing our current systems, operations, and controls. I am expecting a report, a full final report from them in June, late June, early July. But more importantly, they're helping us as we're building the five-year fiscal improvement plan with great insight and, in many cases, suggestions most of which wouldn't surprise you, but on the other hand, they are really great for validating what we're seeing and what we're attempting to correct 
and what we're attempting to change. Uh, that report that's going to be completed in early July will be formally presented to the Board of Trustees in September simply because it's important that that report is heard by everybody and we know that faculty and many staff members are not around during the summer. So we don't want to deliver the news in the summer when people are away. But there will be a lot to look forward to. The second item is the ACCJC update. Uh, as you know, uh, some of you, as a matter of fact, had an opportunity to attend the open forum on March 22nd where we rolled out the draft report. We obviously are still working on it. We're building the assumptions that will be associated with that report, particularly in the financial improvement plan and the projections going out five years. So we are still working on that and finalizing that. The board will have its first read of that document on April 9th in a board study session. And on April 23rd, we'll be asking for the board's official approval. And after that, we send it off to ACCJC for our deadline due May 1st. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Um, were there questions? Um, Trustee Reese. Chancellor White, I have a, a question, um, and maybe you can also give us an update, and maybe for the forthcoming meetings, um, it would be good to also have an update from the PB, I know I'm going to get this wrong, the acronyms, PGC, PBIC, is that correct? It's the Planning Budget Committee and the Participatory Governance right. Council. We are mm -hmm. both have been um, talking about ACCJC as their primary item. What I would, what would be nice is if we could get a report Report from maybe the leadership who co-chair that or the leadership from both faculty classified as well as uh, Romanier to give us a sense of what's been happening at the meetings too as well. Well, yes, we're happy to do that. And the co-chairs for the Participatory Governance Council are Dr. Moore and myself. Um, the, uh, clearly in the document, you will see the history of the meetings. You will also see a chronology of the meetings and, and the uh, members that were involved and or attendees. So that will all be included. And it's an open board study session if anyone wants to speak to any item in the report since it's first read. That would be very appropriate and, and, and better from the members, as you say, who right. physically attend the PBC and PGC. They have been very dedicated in helping to develop this five-year fiscal plan. And uh, we've achieved governance support for the five-year uh, fiscal plan. There's just still a little more fine-tuning involved, so we're going to continue to meet over the fine-tuning. But uh, you can expect that Romanier Johnson will be explaining portions of that document. Uh, Dr. Siri Brown will be explaining portions of that document, as well as Vice Chancellor Whitaker. Okay. And to that extent, the co-chair, if he so chooses. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions? Uh, we'll move to uh, consent calendar. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. It's been moved and second, second by uh, Trustee Weinstein. Roll call, please. Or just roll call. Student Trustee Galan? Yes. Student Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Handy? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez Siwen? Yes. Trustee Napoli Abella Reese? Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. We'll move to our first action item 3.3. Consider approval of first reading on proposed board policy BP 6250. Thank you. Uh, this is the first read for the board policy on board reserves. Uh, the ACCJC uh, the Accrediting Commission in Standard 4 
provides for the authority of the board to set board policy. Uh, this particular item is designed to have a board policy of what we would call a prudent reserve given today's market in terms of costs and any questions you may have around this particular board policy at this time could be discussed um, and we have all the key individuals here and in, who can help answer any questions you might have about that. Thank you, um, Chancellor White. I actually need a motion to so moved. approve. It's been a trustee um, moved Withrow. by trustee, and I need a second. Second. Trustee uh, Weinstein has second. Thank Weinstein. you for that. Um, we can now move into discussion. Trustee Gonzalez, when? Thank you very much. Um, I'm all for fiscal prudence and responsibility and so forth, but I think this um, this board policy is actually not timely. Um, one, I think we could avoid uh, a conflict with the Peralta Federation of Teachers simply by postponing consideration, the first read, until April 9th. If we did that, that would be the same evening that we were getting, uh, we were having consideration of our five-year plan. Um, and if the board so desired at that point, we could uh, vote on a first approval and then vote on second on the 26th when we would be making the same vote uh, to send our five-year plan um, off. Um, so one, I think we could avoid some conflict here, but I now wanna speak to the substance of this, of this item. Um, having a fiscal reserve, of course, makes a lot of sense. Um, I think this particular policy is ill-considered, however. It says that you'll have a 10% reserve but it doesn't say you'll just have that as a goal. It says that if you in any year find that yourself below that 10%, you will within one year get back to 10%. Now, the whole point of actually having a reserve is to provide some pad so that you can uh, plan accordingly. Right now we say we need a reserve of 5%. Um, in practice, we generally have a reserve of more than that. But what if in a given year you find that you are below 10% and you need to make drastic cuts in order to get back to your 10%. You've, you've made yourself, you've basically locked yourself in. I think we could say we had a goal of having a 10% reserve and then having an administrative procedure that says that we shall attempt to get uh, the reserve back up within any one year. But this one is just, it's too rigid. Um, and I, I, it's rigid and it's not timely. I want to just say one other thing. Look, the reason that we provide 30-day uh, notice to the Peralta Federation of Teachers and our other bargaining units, I'm presuming, on board policy is so that they have an opportunity to chime in in a timely manner. You don't give them that. They don't then have the, pro the time to go consult with their unit and then come and have an informed discussion um, at the time when the policy is going to be considered doing it after the fact, uh, then they're going against all of the weight of a vote that's already been made. And I think that doesn't make sense. The whole point of shared governance and consultation is so that you bring in the best ideas, you have them considered by the entire community. If they had had that time to do that, and then they had lost the vote, well then so be it. They'd have made their case, but they didn't have the opportunity to do that in a timely manner. Um, I would like to, um, I will eventually make a substitute motion here, but I'd like to hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you for that. Any other um, comments, questions on uh, Trustee Withrow? The 10% uh, is, a, is a pretty standard goal for a reserve throughout the state. Um, I think what a lot of people don't recognize is that we work on projections or don't take it aboard, but um, just an awful lot of our commitments are for people. And if we don't have a reserve and we have a drawback, a shortfall, that means we have to take immediate action to sever the um, employees uh, to recover so that we balance the books. And that's what the 10% is for. 
so that it gives us at least a year to recover from uh, and restructure in a, in a reasonable, rational method um, to get back on track. Um, just an awful lot of our um, contemporaries throughout the state are not only moving with 10%, but a lot of them are shooting for a goal of 25%. And uh, I've been to workshops uh, that have gone into quite a bit of depth, as a matter of fact, on why they feel that 10% uh, is not enough. Um, a lot of them have uh, a lot more risk than we do. I do understand that. But 10% uh, is very reasonable. And I think that 10% um, is the what the state would recognize as being prudent. Um, I think FICMAT would uh, recognize it as being a prudent action on the part of the district. And so I, I fully support the, um, the uh, board policy 6250 um, in terms of first reading, in terms of first reading, recognizing that uh, we're not, a we're not a a voting tonight to approve it. We're showing it, if you will, as a, as a um, first reading. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Weinstein. Uh, thank you. I'd like to go over the paragraph um, that speaks about uh, maintaining a minimum 10% of unrestricted fund balance for every fiscal year. And when it falls below 10%, the district shall adopt a plan to replenish it to 10% within one year. How, in your, how has that happened? Have you seen that happen? And how, how, does, how does that plan come about? So we have contingency planning or a contingency reserve also, but that's separate from this. But boards who adopt a board reserve, whether it's 5%, 8%, or 10%, normally will have a contingency to help carry them through while they plan to get back to where they were. That's done to prevent, essentially, drastic draconian cuts and layoffs. Um, having a contingent, if you fall below 10%, your contingency reserve kicks in. You have something to rely on while you bill your plan to get back up again, and you avoid the layoffs. Um, it's a prudent way to manage, and it's a best practice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? I, I, I actually, before you make a substitute motion, um, do you have other discussion? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Um, Trustee Reese? I just came back from my own academic senate meeting at my college, and we are doing the exact same thing. So as Withrow was saying, as Trustee Withrow was saying, the chancellor's office has recommended that many districts actually all districts uh, increase the reserves for a variety of different reasons and we understand that economic cycles are are cycles um, and that there's going to be a certain point where California will not be as robust as it has been so that is one um, component of my statement the other component is and I think the worry might the worry which is um, legitimate is the ways in which this is going to be impacting staff and impacting our resources and impacting um, the district in terms of operating expenses. And, and I would say that um, as I've been looking over the five-year plan and budgets and um, our, our freezes, for example, one of the things that I would say would be that we would really need to focus on getting the data that allows us to make budget cuts and budget decisions. And I feel like our data is not clear and accurate, and that would help us be able to create budgets that are informed um, and that do not seem optically or or otherwise as if they're haphazard. And I think that that might be part of the fear. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that that would be part of the fear, which is legitimate. And so back to my first point, 
I agree that the reserves are important because we, we must do that. Um, but I also do think that we need to think about the ways in which we capture data so that as we do our budgets, they are very well informed and communicated throughout um, and not just necessarily across the board. Thank you for that. Um, Trustee Gonzalez, one. I want to come back and then look at this specific language here, and I want to start with the Memorandum of Understanding. So we, we have an MOU with the Peralta Federation of Teachers, and it's very clear. It's a completely unambiguous. Item 1 says, at least 30 working days before proposed district po board policy or administrative procedure is presented to the Planning and Budgeting Council, PBC, the district will make a good faith effort to notify the PFT of the proposed district policy or administrative procedure by sending the text to the proposed of the proposed board policy or administrative procedure via email to both the PFT president and the PFT chief negotiator. This didn't happen. Uh, this language is, is pretty unambiguous here, and, and I, I don't see how we can vote on this tonight in clear violation of an MOU when we have an alternative. And that alternative, we're that, voting. that, well, we're voting on, this is, uh, this, we're, we're just, voting on a first read. Just for clarification, read. this is a first read, um, and <clears throat> so we're not voting um, on right. this. This is not an action item to be voted on. And I on. might add that in the spirit of the MOU, we followed all of the steps and we're at the point of the meeting, which is clearly stated in the MOU, and the meeting is happening tomorrow. So um, to okay. that point, to that point, um, since you've raised a critical question here, um, can we review or have a review, Dr. White, of the steps that have taken place um, related to time, emails, sharing, and any process that has taken place to address? Do you want that now? Um, if, if there's a, a way to share that, do we, do we have that information? We do. Vice Chancellor Whitaker. On February 20th, the PFT was provided with the copy of BP 6250. Um, a week after that is when the PBC convened and they took the PBC and the PGC convened, excuse me, and took a vote on BP 6250. Shortly thereafter, um, the president of the Peralta Federation of Teachers reached out to me to let me know that the PFT felt as though the district violated the CBA by not providing them a copy of BP 6250 30 days prior to the PBC and PGC meeting occurring and voting to move forward on BP 6250. I informed the president, I looked back at the emails, um, I spoke with the individual that pr is responsible for providing the, uh, the PFT with the board policies and the administrative procedures just to get the exact date that PFT was provided the BP. I informed the president of the union that in order to reach resolution on the grievance that was surely to come forward that they would definitely be allowed their 30 days to review. I sent an email um, going through each of the steps that are in article, I believe 6.3, which is 30 days for PFT to review. PFT then has 10 days in which to notify the district if they believe any aspects of the BP or AP are negotiable. The district then has to respond to PFT, which I did. PFT responded to me with their belief that BP 6250, that there were aspects of 6250 that were negotiable. I responded to PFT on behalf of the district to say that the district does not agree that the aspects of 6250 are negotiable because they do not deal with wages, hours, and working conditions. The PFT then responded to say, may we please meet to resolve this matter due to scheduling. The meeting has been set for tomorrow at 1130. Madam President, may Thank I you for that. Um, Trustee Gonzalez, yes. Thank you for that information. That's helpful, but it actually is sort of a little bit beside the point. The point is that prior to the PBC voting on this matter, 
the district was under an obligation to make a good faith effort to provide the Peralta Federation of Teachers with the policy. That did not happen. The Peralta Federation of Teachers did not have the policy. <laughs> they were not able to do adequate consideration and consultation with the PBC at the time, and that is actually the issue. Now, I want to just go to the content of the policy itself, which I think is actually as important as anything else. I don't think anybody in this district is making the argument, and I certainly am not making the argument, that we shouldn't have at least a 10% reserve. And so the first part of the policy, I think, makes perfectly good sense. Yeah, we want a 10% reserve. It's the second part of the policy that doesn't make sense to me. Imagine that uh, we needed a 10% reserve and that um, in a given year, we found that our ending balance was going to take us down even below any reserve. Let's say now we were negative five in, in deficit and we were figuring out how to borrow. In that emergency situation, would we want to be mandated to have that additional 5% pain? The whole point of having a reserve is to give us flexibility. Now, I want to ask Chancellor White, do you believe that it is best practice to have a board policy that says we shall, we must, move back our, uh, move to a 10% reserve in a one-year period, regardless of anything else. Would it not be a more prudent practice? Excuse me, Madam President, could you um, stop the chatter to my left here? I'm, I'm about to wrap up. It's just very difficult to... Trustee Gonzalez, when please continue. I will. It's just been really hard with a lot of distraction on my left side. It was quite vocal. Um, Madam uh, uh, Chancellor, in, in your judgment, should this be part of board policy? Should these part, that mandated 10% within one year, or should this be part of administrative procedure? Okay, so it's going to be a part of both. Uh, the board sets the policy for reserves. The AP are the administrative procedures for implementing that policy, and it is in that document where the latitude and the language of what happens when you fall below 10 percent, so to speak, could be adopted. The reserve level is your choice. The AP is our business to implement because you say you want 10 percent, but clearly when there are mitigating circumstances, unforeseen circumstances, emergency circumstances, which often are unforeseen, there is latitude in how your policy for 10% would be implemented with your approval. You have to say yay or no, no matter what. It's all, the, the ball is always in your court. And so, Madam Chancellor, the mandatory language that says that the district shall adopt a plan to replenish it within 10 percent within one year, does that provide any latitude in an administrative procedure to say otherwise? That yes, is, it does. It does? Yes, it does. All right. That can be done, and it is done. Thank you. It wouldn't um, be the first time. Chancellor White, um, if I may, um, there is another speaker who would like to speak, but I'd like to defer um, to you um, to look at your uh, the oh, rest I'm sorry. of your cabinet. I'm yes, sorry. it's Dr. Moore. I saw your hand. Go, Dr. Moore. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to try to provide some historical uh, background to this. One, that, um, you know, uh, <laughs> in December, when we were going through all of this, okay, uh, we people were various talking about we need a 10 percent um, uh, reserve and part of the discussion phase of that certainly everybody was there and what I'm trying to remind the uh, uh, board is that we have participatory governance in which we have not only the faculty senate uh, we have the classified senate and we have the unions participating Okay, and through that, when you then look at uh, late January, when we finally started uh, coming together more, uh, we the subcommittee, which is the uh, finance subcommittee that basically is doing all of the finance work, including this work, 
we voted on it. We voted on the language. Jennifer was in those meetings, the PFT president. We decided not to have the language in that she wanted to incorporate into it. We thought we didn't need it. Our reading of, of the uh, board policy was that everything that's going to be included uh, in that 10% was the focus of uh, PFT's interests. We thought that, and this is me speaking from the Senate side, uh, in terms of 10 plus one, we saw that in our interest, we wanted a policy here at this district at this particular time. Because if you, re if you reflect back in the, let's just take the last five years, Think about all of the different issues that have happened where literally millions of dollars have been going out. Whether you talk about student appropriations, you talk about what we had to pay back to the state, any one of those are literally millions of dollars. And so when you think about this, at 10% even, one of those things happening will bring us down to, you know, uh, literally at the 5%. And so one of the things that we need to be better at, and we are not, is our knowing what our, what our uh, fund balance is and being careful about what we're doing and the practices that we do. And this is a, another way of, of ensuring that at the very least we have a breather space and now we're talking about a contingency as well and that will allow us a, a more breather space. So from the Senate perspective, we supported this through the Finance Committee and we supported this through the uh, PBC and then those of us who were also on P, uh, PGC. So part of it is there was a difference of opinion on this and we felt that we should uh, proceed ahead with, uh, with it. Certainly if the union perceives that it's their interest to pursue this, they should pursue it. You know, but from our vantage point in terms of our participation, uh, we felt strongly that this was a policy issue that was appropriate for the time, given our past, our more recent past. And Madam President, if I can just piggyback on that comment to say that uh, we respect the MOU that is agreed uh, with the PFT. We are following the MOU, although the timing isn't that great. Um, but more importantly, the key issue is not just the 30-day issue. It's also the fact that the PFT wanted to negotiate on the reserve. And there is no language in AB 1725 SB 160, the RADA Act, Title V, or NOR, the ACCJC standards, and specifically Standard 4, which deals with board responsibility, duties, and authority, to negotiate uh, ending fund balance and or reserve. So the policy situation here is in the board's court. Yes, we must talk to them, and we will be talking to them. But we don't agree that they get to negotiate the reserve. There is no precedence for it. There is no history in this district, I don't believe, of the PFT or any other union negotiating a board policy on reserve. So we will follow the MOU. We will hold the meeting. We will discuss whatever it needs to be discussed, but the negotiating piece was the key issue. And what Dr. Moore is sharing with you is how this whole process of 10% came up, how it was approved, and who was involved. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, Trouble, right? Um, I'd like to call we, we, um, if there's no more discussion um, here, we do have a public, but we have a speaker on this item. Jeff Sinceri, come on up. You're my rock, President. All right. Um, a couple things. One, I take, I take a little bit of exception when, when in terms of throwing around like the PFT wants this, PFT wants that. I don't get a bonus for protecting faculty jobs. 
Um, I also want to say that I looked, um, when everybody said it was standard practice, sorry, our president, President Shinovsky, looked through the Bay 10 to see exactly where the reserves were throughout. And the numbers that I have here, Sierra College is at 8% it's cited. Chabot Las Positas, contingency reserve of 1% with the entire budget, that's AP 6305. Contra Costa, there's no number provided. CCSF, no number provided. Ohlone, no number provided. Foothill De Anza, no number, oh, I'm sorry, 5%. College of Marin, here we are. Describes three different reserve accounts with the general reserve goal of 12% and not more than 18. San Jose Evergreen, 7%. San Mateo, no mention of a specific amount. Um, let's see, oh, West Valley Mission. No more than 3% contingency reserved. Now things um, you know, may be changing and the, what do you call it, the state chancellor may be like, you know, laying, laying down the law as, as it seems, I guess. Um, we're in, I guess, high times right now, I guess. The state budget's doing pretty well. We're doing all, you know, I think the enrollment's declining and we're doing pretty, pretty poorly, I would assume. Um, I know that my courses aren't enrolled the way that they should be. I guess what, what I'm saying is, is that I think we're, we're in a spot now where we have to like, you know, think a lot about, you know, not just the long term, but I think on, on whose backs, like, you know, these kinds of, you know, cuts that are coming are gonna be on. And so as we think about increasing our reserves and making it like, you know, you know, up to 10% and keeping it at 10%, when that moment comes where we actually have to dip into reserves, it's going to be because we have to pay faculty and staff. And my hope is that like, you know, unlike what was, you know, agreed upon within some of, the, some of these earlier meetings that I wasn't able to attend, that when these moments come that it's not gonna happen at the expense of faculty and staff. Um, that's what, you know, President Janowski was fighting for at that meeting, I came late to it. Um, that's what was denied to us by the rest of the, um, the meeting that we were in. And I wanna make sure that that's as clear as possible. All right, that's all I got. Unless, ooh, do I get to answer questions? <laughs> no? Somebody. I mean, if you're, are you done with your? I'm statement? done. I'm sorry. I'm Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> uh, Trustee Brown. <coughs> Excuse me. Did not mean to cough. So I see the, uh, the conversation that we're having now as one that was inevitable with the declining enrollment. And my mantra has been that we don't have to have declining enrollment when we have extreme need in the community and the professor's class should be over-enrolled. We have to build that bridge. And so there are other things that we may want to think about um, besides having uh, resources contract and then tugging and pulling against each other. One would be asking our lobbyists to extend our hold harmless period. As I understand it, there may be some community colleges that have already done that. But in the meantime, we absolutely have to find, develop a, a mindset and a plan that our job is to go out and find the community where they are and teach the classes. We could be teaching classes in um, in, in neighborhood centers, in satellite centers, we don't have to have, um, we don't have to have cuts is what I'm saying. We don't have to have, and our conversations are about cuts, but our conversations that we have in this open forum aren't about how to better reach our community. And that's when we start, um, that's when we start going after each other at who did what instead of what are we all doing. So I just want to bring us back to the idea that we can turn this ship around. The census shows only 30% of people have their degree, which means we're the answer. But we're here, and we're talking to ourselves about what we're going to do with a smaller pie. We're not talking about how to let everyone know how wonderful Peralta is and what opportunities Peralta has. We, don't, we, could, save it. we could save jobs. We could increase the opportunities for people who want to get an education and get jobs. We should be adding more people to the uh, bargaining units because they have a certi certificate and they can work. That's what we ought to be doing. So when we have these conversations about scarcity, let's think about what we can do to change that because the facts are still ab abundantly clear that 
we have a population that's underserved in terms of education. They're in our region. So let's, let's start talking about how we're going to get out to the community. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'd like to make an alternative motion uh, to postpone this item until April 9th. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Second. We have a second, so let's do a roll call. Student Trustee Galan? Student Trustee Jordan? No. Trustee Withrow? No. Trustee Handy? No. Trustee Gonzalez Yuen? Yes. Trustee Napoli Abella Reese? Sure, you need to clarify. Well, I guess my question, question is w when you say um, to extend until April 9, aren't we going to be voting on it on April 9? My motion is to propose is to postpone the first reading until April 9th, oh. which would allow us to then have a second reading on uh, the second meeting of April. No. Trustee Brown? No. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? No. Thank you. Motion fails. Um, so we've accepted the first reading. Um, of the item, do we still need to? You need one more vote on your main motion, which is the consideration of the first reading. Consideration of the first reading, and but it's not. It was in consent. What are, so so a substitute motion is voted on prior to the main motion, which is the motion that opened the discussion. It, this is a first reading issue, so it's not a motion to do anything other than to move it past the first motion. Play, I mean, the first reading into it'll come back to you as a second reading at the next board meeting. But we ha we carry these as generally as consent items or as action items to go through the process of a first to the second reading. So your your original main motion is the motion to consider the first reading of the proposed board policy. I got that. Yes. Yeah, so we need a motion to approve the first reading you already of had item 3.3. You, you, you already had that. That's how you opened the and discussion. And that's how we opened it. And so, so we you'll just, just vote on the existing main motion. Thank you. We can take a roll call on this. Student Trustee Galan? Yes. Student Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Handy? Yes. Trustee gonzalez Yuen? No. Trustee Napoli Abella Reese? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Weinstein? No. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. We will move to action item 7.2, and this is consider approval of the contract agreement with the Collaborative Brain Trust in the amount of $46,000 to assist in the comprehensive search for the position of Chancellor of the Peralta Community College District. Item was pulled by Trustee gonzalez Wen. I'll move approval of this item. Second. Um, we have a motion and approval. Any discussion? Yes. Thank you, President Vinia, and thank you for the uh, subcommittee that, uh, the ad hoc committee that did the search. Um, I have no problems with the the, the 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 search firm, and and here's my my concern with this item, is that the proposal is that we begin this search starting now, and I'm just looking at the calendar. Okay, so if this search, and I look at the documents, they basically say they're going to do the search in three months with two possible months extension. All right, so let's say we began this search on April 1st next week, and we took three months. Um, well, first of all, I don't think that's even going to be possible, but that would put us into sometime in the end of July after people are all gone or right in the middle of finals when we would be doing public forums and reference checks and so forth. And it would give us virtually no time at all to actually explore, well, what do we want in a job description? We're coming out of a, we're actually sort of still in the middle of a pretty deep crisis in this district. And I don't think we properly understand why we're here. I believe a more prudent time frame for this would be to spend between now and the fall 
doing our studies, figuring out what FICMAT is going to tell us, et cetera, et cetera, and then in the fall start a proper search. I believe our search pool will actually be quite a bit bigger. If we start right now, the only people we're going to get who are applying are people who are basically out of work, um, and we will not have the time to cultivate the candidates for chancellor that we would otherwise be able to have. So I, I, I'm fine with collaborative brain trust. I'm just quite concerned about the timing, and I would ask that we modify this six months to really begin in earnest in the fall and then extend maybe seven months. So we're doing interviews and final forums and so forth in February or so, something along those lines, with a start date of July 1st, 2020. This seems to uh, envision a start date of fall 2019, and I just, in this district, I just cannot see that happening. I can't see that happening in the tightest run ship in the state, let alone Peralta with our four campuses and our shared governance processes that are in need of some uh, bolstering. So that's, that's what I want to say, and if we can, in fact, move that, I'm fully in support of this. Um, Trustee gonzalez one I think there is um, definitely some flexibility um, on the timing of when we start. Um, so your point well taken. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, um, roll call please. Student Trustee Galan. I'm sorry, was that no? Yes. Okay. Student Trustee Jordan. Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Handy? Trustee gonzalez Yuen. Yes. Trustee Napolia Bellariz? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you, motion carries. We're in action item 8.1, consider approval bank signer resolution number 18 slash 19 dash 52. We have an approval, we need a second. Second, second. do we have any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Student Trustee Galan? Yes. Student Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Handy? Yes. Trustee gonzalez Yuen? Yes. Trustee Napolia Bellariz? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you, motion carries. Item 8.2, consider approval of resolution 18 uh, slash 19-54 for the release of retention of Roden Builders, Inc. in the amount of $7,769.80 for the College of Alameda campus-wide repairs. So motion. moved. It's been approved. I mean, motion. We have a first. We need a second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Student Trustee Galan? Yes. Student Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Handy? Yes. Trustee gonzalez Yuen? Yes. Trustee Napolia Bellariz? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Weinstein? Yes. Trustee Bonilla? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move into Board of Trustee reports. Um, Trustee Withrow? Pass. Student Trustee Galan? Can you come back to me? Uh, Trustee uh, Handy? Yes. Um, I do want to say how wonderful the student event at Merritt College was today. And I'm so proud of the students. They put on some really great um, panels that really helped to empower the other students. And I'm hoping that um, other colleges will take, um, will, will, will kind of follow suit because what you find is that when people start talking, our students are, they bring so much baggage with them. So, so a lot of our faculty and staff too, but what we saw today was a sharing of how we all got to where we are at this point. And it was empowering for the students as well as for those who were telling their stories. Um, one um, counselor says that she sees, it, she sees it in the face. 
She said she looks at a student, she knows that they're carrying something. Well, creating those types of circles, I think, is very empowering. And it doesn't have to be a big thing, you know, just a, a circle gathering of men or a circle gathering of women, just to talk about different issues. But I think that there are easier ways for us to really connect with our students that don't take a lot of extra money or whatever. It's just that some very creative ideas that are very, very supportive for them. Um, another thing that I wanted to say is that um, I, we missed the opportunity to close in honor of Victor McElhaney, the son of Lynette um, McElhaney and Clarence McElhaney. And um, it just brings to our hearts how we help our students how college helps to change the lives of many of our students. Whereas in Victor's case, his parents did absolutely everything right. Absolutely everything right. And the kid was just an amazing. He was here for a season, not for a lifetime. And he packed a life into it. And if you could have been at the service, and there was probably a thousand people there. They helped to heal us because what happened to um, Councilwoman McElhaney was the worst nightmare of every black mother that I know who has a son. And we all needed to be in those services to have our own healing and also to talk about how we as a city can again help to fight gun violence, which is what Victor was trying to do, and how we can support our community. Because if we don't, we're just lo we're losing way too, way too many. So I um, just want to say that hopefully we can again get back to embracing our students. When we hear we talk about the judiciary issues, we talk about um, union issues and all of that, I would love to hear more things about how we're going to support our students. Supporting the faculty and the staff is not necessarily trickle down to supporting our students. If we can support our students, we can have more students in those classrooms and the faculty members wouldn't have to worry so much about deactivations and cancellations. We need a better outreach and a better concept. If everyone looks at every student we have as the most precious gem, that we cannot afford to lose one. And we've lost many just in the registration process. So this is what my weeks have been about in talking with students and hearing their stories and sharing my own stories. And I'm hoping that we can do a lot more of that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Student Trustee Jordan. Um, good evening, everyone. I wanted to report that I was really excited um, in the last week and a half to work with Trustee Yuen and Trustee Brown, along with uh, Roger from Restoring Our Communities and our president of Laney College, Tamil Gilkerson, in helping to get a resolution that I wrote in 2017, seen by some of our assembly people to see how that, how we can help impact change. And as a student, we learn about writing policies and different things and how can we do that and we all were able to come together to go and meet with different people to talk about actually implementing change and bringing action to help formerly incarcerated and systems impacted students so i'm excited um, to present next board meeting april 9th a resolution that the board would uh, be voting on another thing that um, i've been working on is with um, all of the students getting to know that we're all Peralta students. And so, yes, we do have our different campuses, We, um, but we're Peralta students. And so also we're trying to put together a district-wide event on policy and also resolutions and just how you fill out certain paperwork in order to get the things done that you need to be able to do um, as students and in the business world. And hopefully that will take place next month. Uh, another thing that I wanted to report is that um, as a Peralta student trustee, I stand in solidarity with um, the people who were slain at Christ Church and um, New Zealand. And I want our Muslim community here at Peralta to know that I stand with you and all of the student government, we all stand with you. And also the uh, victims in um, Mozambique, that your, our thoughts are with you also. And then um, in honor of w Women's History Month, um, 
thank you to Dr. White for taking my meeting and helping me to navigate how I would like to move forward with different things. And it's awesome to see a woman chancellor that is um, helping to lead a district. And then slash um, in honor of Women's History Month, the um, I cannot imagine how our councilwoman, Lynette Gibson Malcahaney, must feel um, with the atrocity that has happened in regards to her awesome son, Victor, her and her husband, and how she has um, shown so much grace in, um, in the way that she has carried herself through this whole entire time. Um, I just wanna let her know that Peralta students know you love them and we see you and we stand with you. And so um, I would just ask everyone if they can just say his name with me, Victor McElhaney. Victor, Victor McElhaney. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Trustee Brown. I uh, would like to thank Trustee, uh, student trustee Jordan for the grace in which she leads and brings together um, people who are here to support and serve her and um, th in her representation of the students at Peralta. Um, and uh, I also echo Trustee Jordan and Trustee Handy's uh, support for mothers who are dealing with uh, the loss of their um, children to violence. There was a very um, moving service for um, Victor McElhaney, and it was uh, a call to our community in terms of um, the city of Oakland and the state of California to address gun violence. And it was very heavy on our hearts that we had um, atrocities all over the globe that were happening as a result of gun violence, but we still are moving inch by inch when um, entire nations uh, can move with swiftness. And granted, the state of California is quite large and about equivalent to the size of the islands of um, New Zealand, but the size does not determine your capacity for action. So um, it's, a, it's a public health crisis and um, something that underscores why it's important to have mental health counseling for our campuses and why it's important to have um, wraparound services because our students are living in a violent and unpredictable world and um, none of us are insulated from that and we have to find a way to cope with that and then still be thinking and functioning beings. Um, so um, just um, Good on, on those at Peralta who are supporting those wraparound services. And thank you, Trustee Jordan, for your leadership. Trustee Reese. Okay. Uh, Trustee Gonzalez Wynn. Trustee Weinstein. Thank you. I, I also want to thank Trustee Jordan for being so eloquent in what you said and, and really, I think, speaking for so many for the students, the faculty, and certainly for the Board of Trustees, thank you so much. I also want to thank Trustee um, Handy and Dr. Burns for participating in the event today. It sounds like it was an extraordinary event, um, and I'm very happy that, that, that we are able to speak publicly about issues that are so private and usually held secret. So I think that was an extraordinary thing to do. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the Lunar New Year celebration. Um, and it really, the Peralta Lunar New Year celebration, the year of the pig. Um, and it was a really, I hadn't gone last year. It was really quite a beautiful gathering. Um, I was very um, proud of our three presidents who got a, who got pigs from from um, the Fab Lab, <laughs> and um, also um, really spoke from the Fab Lab. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. We're still on. Pigs. Yeah, but there were only three that were there. Oh. So, um, and anyway, it was it was really it was it was really a, a terrific event, and um, um, was very pleased that so many of us were there. 
Um, and um, I hope to be there next year. There was great music, singing, and um, um, music that, that I didn't even know was coming from Laney College in their music department. It, it was um, exciting to hear the students and how good they are, um, and it makes me happy that music is being shared um, at our colleges. And um, last, um, certainly there's been a lot of violence and um, a lot of sadness um, and it was um, made me feel good to see the uh, was the Prime Minister I guess of um, Zealand New Zealand act as quickly as she did um, and you know that shows leadership uh, and it was also um, the month of women's history and I think that we have some extraordinary we have many extraordinary women leaders here at Peralta but he, you know everywhere you know internationally um, as well and I, I just want to say um, that I respect and I'm very glad that um, we, we stand on the shoulders of the women who came before us and there are plenty of them so um, that's it thank you um, thank you for that. I think student trustee Jordan has one more piece. So I forgot to uh, make a brief mention um, to thank all of the students at each campus that have put on these awesome events for Women's History Month. I was able to visit a couple of campuses and take part in some of the celebrations and um, the talks at the different campuses, and it is just awesome to see the work that students are doing. Um, so I just wanted to recognize them for all of their work that they have done this month, and also tomorrow at Laney College. Um, I will be a part of a women um, in leadership or women's in politics um, forum for Women's History Month, along with uh, Trustee Reese, and um, is, is there another trustee on there? No. Okay, well, us too. We'll be there um, in support of, <laughs> of Women's History Month. But I just want um, all students who are watching to know that you too can be a student trustee. You don't have to be a student trustee to implement change. It just takes the power of one person to just make your mind up to do whatever it is you want to do. And then just start talking to people and someone will help you. That's great. I almost don't want to say anything like that's that's <laughs> It makes my night um, to come and um, listen to students. This is the best part of the evening for me. Um, when I get to hear the work of student trustee Jordan, when I get to hear the work of student trustee Galan um, and how active they are and how vocal they are, um, it, it's just amazing. It just it brightens my heart um, when we get the reports from our associated students um, mm -hmm. from each of the campuses. It's it's why we do the work that we do, um, and so it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, I, I don't want to end on a glim note because I, I also my heart is very very heavy for our council member McElhaney with the loss of um, Victor McElhaney, and so. You know, it's grieving while leading. This is um, Councilwoman um, McElhaney's mantra right now. Um, and during this month of women's history, um, which I find ironic um, because women uh, carry and bear so much um, and bring so much to the community that we are recognized and should be recognized 365 days out of the year. Um, so. Um, just ashe and shout out to all of the women leaders in our community. Um, and with that, I will end with um, announcements. Um, Vice President. Oh, you wanted to come back? Exactly. I was, yeah, I was so see, um, Thank you. A few things. Um, there's currently a student-led effort to improve our urban planning and emergency intelligence. and. Uh, I reached Elliot, uh, sorry if I mispronounced this, Mazordes uh, reached out to me and um, he and I would like to reconvene with select members from the Emergency Operations Planning Group. 
And um, also uh, concerning ADA vigilance and uh, campus safety, um, I was told by uh, the former uh, vice chancellor of um, general services that I think at this meeting there is supposed to be some item concerning um, fixing some of the broken elevators with hydraulic system failures. So um, I don't know what the status of those broken elevators is, but I'm hoping to um, catch up with the interim acting chancellor of general services. And, um, <laughs> and on a lighter note, uh, regarding uh, community outreach, uh, student trustee Aisha and I have identified a, a community mentoring program for students with learning disabilities. And um, we're a little late in the game. We have like an April 1st deadline of um, getting in contract with the program, but um, uh, I, I tried reaching out to uh, a list of people trying to get like physical and virtual posters posted, but I haven't gotten any uh, word from students. So um, the program says they can uh, send a team of their own uh, recruiters to the colleges if there is a uh, demonstrated interest by the head honchos of Peralta. So um, I hope we can have, uh, I can, we can, Aisha and I can sit down with um, either uh, the Chancellor White or, um, and or Vice President Bonilla and, and discuss this so we can make it out in time. That's it. Madam thank President, you. Thank do, you do we have time to have a quick um, update on elevators? Is, is, is it appropriate to have anything said about that now, or would you like to have that talked about at another time? I think it's appropriate. Uh, I'm going to refer to President Gilkerson, um, who has an update on that. Uh, so thank you, Chancellor White. Um, so I do have an update you want on the elevators, not the fire watch, correct? Okay, so um, the elevators, um, we have several elevators that are out of service at uh, Laney College at this time. Um, repairs for the library elevator um, though, um, though a slow start have uh, slowly began. Um, and we hope that when we return on April 8th, the library elevator will be uh, completed. One of the elevators in the tower um, is down, as well as the E elevator. Um, replacement parts are being ordered and hopefully will be in this week and then elevator repair will begin on those. As you know, the elevator in the theater was red tagged by the Department of Industrial Relations. Um, at this point, um, that elevator is down and we've had to do a workaround. Um, we are trying to work and hope to have a quote by the end of the week on a temporary fix. But what they call, um, what we need is something called pack the jack, which means that we really need to replace the jacks in um, both our student center elevator and um, in the theater elevator, which is a very, very costly project that we will need to look into doing. Um, and could be close to 325K for both of those, um, but we're hoping to know more. Um, and so uh, we continue to work diligently on the number of facilities related concerns that we have um, at the campus and then the fire watch. Might as well. Okay, um, so um, seven, as you all know, we continue to be on fire watch, um, Laney College. Seven buildings out of 17 have been cleared by Simplex, Grinnell, or Janssen Controls um, as of this week. Um, but that means that they have only, um, the, the contractor has only said that they've repaired it. It has not been reviewed by Oakland Fire. We had hoped to have Oakland Fire out this week to be able to clear our buildings, but based on the progress, they do not want to come out to clear us. Um, until more work has been done. I want to stress that this, um, we have been trying to work with Simplex Grinnell to get them out. We have not seen them a couple days this week, so we'll continue to work on that. Um, but right now, um, our estimate is looking like 
possibly having them, Oakland Fire, come out um, the week of April 15th to possibly clear our building. So we have been on lo offline um, on Firewatch since uh, before the beginning of the semester. Um, I wanted to just make clear that um, any updates we do to uh, the control systems for the fire alarm panels is only a small portion of the work that needs to be done in the overall uh, findings for um, our Firewatch. But um, we are hoping. Um, um, again, uh, by April 15th, but we'll be giving a consistent update to the chancellor on progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Student trustee Jordan has an announcement. Oh, I just wanted to piggyback off of what President Gilkerson was um, when she was giving her report just now and also say um, that the ASLC president, um, DAG, who got up and spoke earlier and when he was voicing his concerns, now you understand why his report was really a letter about concern because of what he has to deal with every day in the student center with students and um, basically the facilities in which we're being educated and have to um, learn in. So um, I know everybody is working really hard in everything but if there's anything else that can additionally that can be done to support um, the different players that are involved, we, we have one person that is doing two jobs that are very huge and important, even though she's brilliant and she can do it, right? But that's, that's a lot. So if we could just kind of be um, come together about, about these issues a little swifter because it's if something happens, then our district could get sued, right? And we don't need that. And then also Channel 2 was at our school the other day, and I just happened to be walking on campus and see Channel 2 at our school because of all of the things that are going on with our facilities. Sad, but true. Thank you. Um, Trustee Weinstein. Thank you. The next regular board meeting will be held on April 9th at the district office boardroom. The board will have a study session from 6 to 7.30. Therefore, the regular board meeting open session will begin at 7.30 that day. A reminder that Peralta will observe the Cesar Chavez Day holiday next Monday, April 1st, with closed offices at the district and colleges. Um, on behalf of the trustees, we'd like to wish our students a happy spring and restful spring break. Peralta shares in the sympathy towards families and students of New the New Zealand shooting and adjourn in memory of Victor McElhaney, son of Oakland City Council member. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this meeting is adjourned.